Hello, everybody. This is Grizzly once again from Lexington, Kentucky. Good afternoon, everybody. We're running just a little bit behind, but it's no problem. Sorry we we're late. I got somebody backstage I'm getting ready to bring on. Remember, we're coast to coast around the world. We got a special guest. He's going to lead us on the path and talk about things. There you go there, sir. How you doing? I'm okay, you. I'm doing good, thank you. Well, that's great. So I'm what's good. your name? Tell us about yourself. Right, so uh, my name's uh, Derek Green. I'm a psychic medium from the UK. Uh, I've got following like yourselves all over the world uh i'm currently quite big over the pond in america and canada don't ask me how that's happened but it's happened uh i do readings on facebook uh every weekend and i also go out ghost hunting uh most of it most of the week uh so i'm doing a bit of everything oh really. wow so you do uh, both so, yeah so uh, paranormal has been sort of my life since i was very young so let's start out. So, so your psychic abilities, how'd you, when did you learn about that? Uh, I saw my very first spirit, ghost, whatever you want to call it, uh, at the age of five year old. Oh my gosh. Uh, what did you do? Uh, got a little bit scared, but there you go. It's like, best way I can describe it is if anybody's seen the film, the sixth sense when the car crashes and he is in the back of the car and he says, Mummy, uh, the man down there crashed his car and he's dead and he's and she says, How do you know that, son? And he says, Because he stood outside the window. That's how it sort of happened to me when I first saw my very first ghost spirit. Uh since then I've grown in strength. I've hid it away for quite a bit because when I was at school, the school said I was going a bit round the bends. Right. I was right. seeing things but nobody else could hear. I was seeing things but nobody else could see. Um and they wanted to keep me back a year to say that I was not learning at school, not doing this, not doing that. Um things kind of went forward a bit. Um I'm now learnt to live with it and control it and use it to my ability. Uh, I can now uh, see, hear, taste, feel, touch objects. I can channel spirit. I can go into into chances. I can touch almost any any object when I'm out ghost hunting or or uh, read people's clothing, rings, photographs. And I've grown over the years in strength to where I am now, and I'm quite happy now. I'm in a good place. Um, yeah, I'm in a happy place now. It's, it, it it might sound weird, but it's sort of, I've learned how to control what I'm doing and I've now just grown with it. And I'm not scared now what people might say to me and say, Ooh, he's not right, he's not normal. It doesn't bother me one bit now. I can just go through life and cope with it all. So where are you from right now? Right, so we are in... Uh, the county of uh, South Yorkshire, which is more or less central uh, UK. Uh, I got you. In a, yeah, in a, in a little place called uh, Barnsley, which is in between Sheffield and Leeds. So growing up being a psychic, was that hard on you? That was very hard. Um yeah, it was really, really hard. It was <laughs> at the age of five and you've seen things that people can't see and you have what some people would call like an imaginary friend. So you would you would have people that you would talk to and people that you could see 
and nobody else could. It, it was really hard to get my head around what I was actually seeing or what I was talking to or what was talking to me or it it was strange it was really it was scary when I was young uh, it was frightening as well I must confess it was really really frightening back then um, but hey ho I've learned to come through it and I've come through better side and I'm now enjoying it all so yeah well, that's great that's great well you know let's let's talk about through the high school years you know uh relationships and everything did that affect those two uh relationships wasn't wasn't an issue it, it was i sort of yeah i had girlfriends and what have you but i also did other things on side like uh seeing things that i could still see uh it, i suppose in a way i scared a lot of girlfriends and i've scared a lot of my kids girlfriends because of knowing things about them that I couldn't possibly know and saying stuff and I'm going through, I'm not sitting in my house, I'm going out. Uh, it was sort of, yeah, it was a weird childhood, but it was, yeah, teenage years. It was, <laughs> it was sort of, I sort of tried to sort of get on with life and sort of try to enjoy myself, but I sort of put it on back burning a little bit uh, so I could sort of get on with life and, go through teenage years uh we're talking 80s at this time so we're talking 1980 onwards and it was it was time i wanted to sort of be in and sort of enjoy and i couldn't do it if i was talking to spirit and other bits and bobs so i just put on back burner and sort of enjoy life a little bit growing up into a teenager um which was hard because spirit had other things to say to me and i didn't i couldn't sort of ignore what was being said Oh, I can believe that. So who's your partner in crime with you? I'm Kelly. I'm this Derek's is my, daughter. This is my daughter. Oh, uh, big accent too. <laughs> uh, she's one of my uh, admins for me, uh, psychic page and my paranormal. She's also a paranormal investigator. Well, that's, uh, so with, she's also a psychic? No, no, no. No, no. no. Oh. Along, with me, uh, along with my wife as well, we do it. We're, we're a family run paranormal team. Uh, where we go out, but we also have friends that we've met that has joined the team and uh, they come out with us on ghost stunts. So it's like a family run business. I, yeah, I tried to run it, me, 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 your psychic page and me, and the paranormal page as a family run sort of business. So I treat, treat everybody as sort of family and treat them all with respect and that sort of thing. Right. And just keep them all sort of in sort of going in that right area i got you i got you it's same as when i do me so being a psychic and everything is how was it when you got into the later years into your 20s did it the ever later. affect you to where it bothered you so much and did it affect you out in public uh no the, the later years were, were, were actually quite exciting uh i was married at 21 uh, and it was sort of, I enjoyed my life. Uh, I've, I started doing, I've always done card reading, so I've always done tarot cards and that sort of thing. And then I moved from tarot cards into ghost hunting and haunted locations and, and the paranormal. That's where my love started then of doing ghost hunting, different side of being a psychic, going out and doing ghost hunts and into places where you don't know the history and you're picking up things and whatever else. And then I went through that sort of period and then now I've sort of gone back around where I'm doing my cards and my readings again. So I've gone full I've gone full circle. Uh it's been a good ride. It's been good. I've said I've gone I've gone full circle. Uh like I showed you when when I first contacted you, I've had a TV crew, a film crew joining me for a few months uh we made we made a documentary which we'll talk about that later uh and other things have sort of happened since then when my life sort of gone changing again if you know what i mean so things have started to go further with the paranormal than what i thought it would do when i first started on this journey yeah 
No, I mean, I can truly understand that. But, I mean, it's like right now, sitting where you're at, do you, do you see stuff just sitting around you? Or? Where, where I'm sat now, uh, I, am sat, I am sat currently in what is now my Don't my room. reading room and my haunted object room. So what you can't see is over the back here, I've got, around, I've, got an, I've got an array of haunted dolls and haunted objects. And this room where I come and sit here, this is where I do all my readings, uh, where I do, do face-to-face all the phone. Uh, I do haunted object sessions with my team in here. And this is my little domain that I've created where I sort of sit here and I've got all these pair of eyes watching me and looking at me and we're all wondering what's going off. And it's like, they talk to me constantly and they go walking around the house and it's, don't yeah, it's, show him. it's quite a good place. I've created this little room and it's sort of so sorry. So oh, what I'll do is just I'll show camera around, just so you can see. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> then behind this, behind this here is his uh, doll's house. Yeah, that I, I couldn't do that. No, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I couldn't this do is, that. This is sort of where it sort of led to. It's. Uh, my viewers and people that watch me have sent me objects over, over the time. And uh, this is how it all started. So it's something new again. <laughs> so you can actually touch an object and feel it's it's haunted? Yes. Or? Yes. Yes. I can, I, can touch, I can touch an object. Um, I go back go back about a two or three year back. Uh, we were sat in a pub one day having having dinner or something to eat and this woman came this woman came to me and wife was talking to her she came to me and i gave her a reading in the pub and she was gobsmacked and whatever else and then skip forward about 12 months she we were sat in the same pub and she came to me again and said she said i don't if, if you can remember me she said but you gave me a reading in this pub a year ago and i went vaguely I really I, i've done that many i can't remember who from what I did and whatever else and uh, she said my grand's sort of left blah 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 and I wanted to read this ring from it see if we can get out from this ring and she gave me this ring and within five minutes of me holding this ring in the middle of a crowded pub I had this lady crying her eyes out she was in tears because of what, what I was saying to her getting from this ring <laughs> Well, um, I'll tell you one thing. That's that's amazing that you can touch something. Yeah, and I can tell you this: if you ever touch my ex, my ex wife, you probably turn into fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a strange thing to have, but I said I've learned I've learned over the years how to sort of control things, and how to use things, and when not to use it, and when to use it. So yeah, it's it's ideal. Well, that's good because a lot of people have the problem of turning it off and on. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of people have problem going out in public because they see so much. Everybody's hollering at them, trying to get their attention at somebody they see in the store. It's a family member. Hey, you need to stop them and so forth. So yeah, yeah, that's really amazing. Uh, yeah, police officer, we it. Uh, we were yeah. She just reminded me we were doing a ghost hunt. Uh, what last year, year before? I think so. Year so, before, yeah, about, yeah, about two years ago. And we're just coming out of this building, and the police turned up. And what are you doing? Oh, we're having a ghost. Hunt. My wife says to these two police officers, Oh, by the way, my husband's a psychic medium. And I ended up giving these two police officers a reading outside this haunted location. And Adam, Adam, sort of going. How the hell did you know that about what me? Happened? No one knows that about me. How do you know all that? And it's it's strange how things happen. Uh, one of them turned around and said to you, didn't he? No, that's not true. That's not yeah. true. When it ended, he said, you're spot on. And we also, I've also started doing a pub quite recently. So I'm now appearing, appearing in a pub every uh, every month uh, to do psychic events. <laughs> and the first one was not long back. And we had a bloke... Come, bloke come up to me after this reading and he stood he, he just says how the hell did you know that about me my own wife and my own mother 
does not know things about me that you said. <laughs> that is something else. <laughs> but it's nice when people come up to you and they say, you know, Shima, you were right about that. You were bang on. You were spot on. You were what you've said you were absolutely so accurate. It's I can't believe that you said that about me when nobody else knows about it. And it it's all I said to him is that's my job, that's what I do. Uh and it's I can't explain to him how I how I know these things, but I just do know these things. That's wild. Now when you're sitting there watching, I guess you all call the telly. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever sit there and said, oh, I know what happened there? No. Uh, that's something I've never, Here we go. I've never, I can honestly say, I have never sort of gone, uh, oh, phone's going to ring and it'll be so-and-so or oh, that's going to happen on telly. I've never actually seen that. What I do get is, I get visions of things that, have not happened yet. Yeah. Uh, so a few years ago, I had a vision of this plane coming in over this village and then crashing into the sea and everyone getting killed and whatever else. But I didn't know where this was. And it went on for about a week over and over again. I knew roughly what happened. I saw houses. I saw where it was, but didn't know where in the world it was going to happen. I'm not allowed to stop it. I can't stop it. It's meant to happen. So right. I'm seeing something that is going to happen. And I said to the wife, I says, I've been seeing this plane crash and I've described it all. And four days after I described it, it came on our local news about this plane crashing somewhere out in some uh, desert country. And it, it said it came over the houses and crashed into the sea. And I saw this happen, but I couldn't, didn't know where. So I'm not allowed to sort of say, oh yeah, let's phone this and say, plane's going to crash. It's meant to happen. I'm seeing it before it actually happens. And that is a scary thing to sort of See? get your head around. Right. Why Why show me something like that when I can't stop it? Right. I see one of your co-workers is on. Right. Chris. Christopher. And it's known as Premonition. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he said he worked for you for years. Yes. Ooh. So Brian. Brian, I bet it's Brian. Yep, it is. If you look down yeah. to the bottom, you can see the comments. Yeah. 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 Click down, Kelly. Yeah. See him? Comments. Comments. Yeah. Yeah. Brian. See all. And Patsy. And Patsy. Yeah. 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 Been with uh, been working with Derek for years. Yeah. 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 Brian is. Yeah, go back on the video. Brian has been with us for I mean, now 11, how long have been with us? A long time, eight years, I've been eight years, nine years. I've been, been starting coming out with you since it's 2000. Been, and... It's been some time. Brian lives in Canada. 14. And uh, Brian and me have always worked so well together when, when we do a psychic events and when we're out ghost hunting. Uh, Brian is not just a medium and an empath but brian is what what me and me and my wife would say and his and and his wife a really good close friend uh we're hoping to get over to canada or vice versa and try and go over and see brian and his wife because we, we do count brian and his wife as as close friends rather than rather than somebody that works works on my page uh brian has got a heart of gold is brian it was good for saying it, but he has. On. he has. I've been with you for three years now. Show us. Yeah. 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 Shell, Shell's just come on. Shell, Shell runs. Shell runs my psychic page for me. I could not cope without Shell running my page. She runs it. She runs it to a, a fine tooth comb. She knows everything that's going off. She loves it. It's like one of our members are on uh, now. Uh, so. Um, She's put hi, Derek. Uh, did a reading. Uh, reading. He was uh, spot on, and he's amazing. <laughs> these are the these are the sort of comments that I get. I don't think I am. People people play pop me for saying this, but a lot of my viewers and a lot of my fans will say Derek's a fantastic meme. Derek's probably one of the best out there, Derek. And I don't think I am. 
I just do what I do and I enjoy doing what I'm doing. And But everyone keeps saying to me, oh, you, you, yeah, you are good, you're fantastic, you're brilliant, you do do this and, and your readings are bang on, you don't get no wrong and you're fantastic at this and that. But it's just a job to me. It's not, I'm not out to go and be classes one at best at me. It's not, that's not me. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can understand that. <laughs> you, know I mean? I so, just you know, when you talk about your psychic abilities, walk me through your gifts. What, what can you do? Walk me gifts. Uh, right. right. So I can, I can see spirit. I can feel spirit. I can, I can taste. I can smell. So anything, any taste or any smells that come into the room, I can, I can do all that. I can uh, do transfiguration, which is where I let spirit come into my body and they talk um, all my face changes transfiguration and, and, and all that sort of thing I can do scrying into a mirror so I can I can do scrying for a mirror um, train for Ouija board uh, I can do that um, what is the and reading oh, I can do I can do I can touch objects uh, and read photographs uh, items brickwork uh, anything that I can touch, I can go back. It doesn't matter if it, if it's stone, if it's an item, if it's a, if it's a personal item of jewelry, it's clothing, anything like that, I can touch and I can instantly just go back to a time where I'm explaining what's happening as I'm touching that object. Wow! Uh, so I've got I've got quite a lot quite a lot of gifts, but. Uh, sort of coming. I work. I work very close. I, I work very closely with uh, demonic objects as well. So I'm, I'm. I get objects sent to me that people can't work with, or they think they're too dark, or. Uh, but I find myself. I can. I can work with with things like that and control things like that. Uh, it's yeah. It's sort of everything's just gone haywire, and I've I've got so many gifts that I use in a psychic ability, it's hard to sort of go through every single one of them because it's just so many. No, I could understand that. And it's pretty neat going on uh, ghost hunts because you can walk into a place and be like, e yeah, there's nothing here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we do get we've that. We've done that a few times. There's a lot of fake. There's a lot of fakery out there, which is a problem with paranormal. And people that watch me what you say that we don't fake stuff when we're out. If we if we walk into a location and it's dead, so to speak, there's nothing in there. We will say there's nothing here, guys. We're we're going to move and go to a different location, and we'll try somewhere else. We don't stay in a location if there's nothing happening, nothing there. Because it's it's not worth it. I've never lied about things that I'm doing or things that I'm seeing. And if I say there's nothing there, there's nothing there. We'll go and move and go somewhere else. And I think that is why people watch us and get involved with us because we don't lie about things. We don't make things up. And there's so many fakery out there at the moment. It's unreal, and it makes us look sort of good because we don't fake don't fake things. Yeah, there are a lot of fakes out there, and unfortunately, how can you tell a fake from an original? Um, right. So on a on a, a reading sense, if if I I've, I've just done this this documentary and we called it "Don't Feed the Psychic," I don't feed any information to me about yourself. So when you go to see a psychic. If they start, or if you're on Facebook, if that medium asks you to send him a friend's request on Facebook, he's got all your details at hand. He can go through your Facebook page and tell who's tell things about it because people write things on the Facebook. Yeah. So that is one way. On my psychic page, when we book his readings on you a no on a Sunday, Shell, which has been on, Shell deals with all the readings and books them all, but Shell doesn't tell me who's on until the day that I am on that page reading people, 
And then she says, so-and-so's next, or so-and-so's next, or this person is next. So I don't know who is having a reading done on that day because I don't get to tell that information. Also, if a, if you go and see a psychic, any psychic, any, anybody can turn around to you and go, right, I can, I'm looking at you now and I can see that I can see that you had you had a bad time time in your life. I can see you had a lot of health problems, and your face will start to change. So somebody will be reading your face, and they'll see little suckles, and they'll work on that. So if your health is bad, they'll see it in your face, they'll see it change, and they'll work on your health. I never work on health or money or love. I don't do that. I work on things that only you would know about. So I aim at things that only you would know that nobody else would. And that's what singles me out from like the fake mediums. Do you know something? I'm sorry to say this. I think you should do my reading. Cool. So that would so that's that would sort that sort of singles me out from the fake. That would sort of say, Yeah, I I don't know things about your life because you don't put things I don't know you from like Adam and it's like I'm telling you this about you. Like when I walk into that pub and I do people in that pub and I walk around people and I see where I'm drawn to and I walk to a table and I go, you, blah, 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 and she starts crying her eyes out and you go, yeah, that's my, that's my job done, that's it. I'll hit it on the thing about her that nobody else knew about. And that's the way I work. That's the way I've always worked. Uh, but fakes, there's just too many fakes out there at the moment. It's making it hard. For genuine mediums like myself to sort of do readings because people tarnished every medium with the same brush. We're all fakes and we're all out for money. We're all out for this and we're all going to come people. No, I'm sorry, that's not me. Yeah, I mean, I can see that and that really affects a lot of people. Okay. You know, because, you know, there's good hearted people that really want help. And they go to people that are fakes and they just take all their money. People that really want help. So, and, and that's what's really sad. And, uh, and they really do it. Uh-oh, we lost them there. Derek, are you there? Okay, we lost Derek for a second here. Let's see if we can get him back on. Derek. Hopefully no Ichi Giz Busy Wizzies is interfering with our show here. I hope not. So... He says two minutes. I wonder what's going on here. Something. I wonder if he's having problems on his side. Everything's working pretty good there for a moment. So. I don't know what was going on there. So we'll see. But. Uh, Did you know that what do you all think about what he's saying? Do you all believe uh, the psychics actually have the power to do what they're saying and stuff? You know, do they, uh, can they see things? Are they gifted? You know, that's my question. There's all those fakes out there. 100%. Ask him if we can tell you something about you. Oh, you want him to ask, tell him to tell me about something about me? I don't know him, so I guess. Oh, he's back. Hello, Derek. And he's not back. He just left. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll ask him. That's not a problem. 
You may have to take a bathroom break or something. Is my Darren Bronson? Is he out there on the show watching, Mr. Bronson? I sent you the link, brother. He's my new partner in crime. We'll announce what we're doing here sometime in the next month or so. It's going to be very, very interesting. Oh, his internet's playing up. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But, you know, psychics and medium has always fascinated me. It, it really has. And the reason why it has is because it's always piqued my interest because of what are they capable of doing. And Derek definitely... Oh, his girlfriend. Okay. And uh, they always pique my interest is because each one that I speak to or interview, you know, I may be writing a book about, is that they can actually do something different or like than what the other ones can do. And that's what fascinates me the most. So... It's wild why and how they get things. I don't understand the powers they get. Most of the time, it's passed down from generation to generation. And that's how they get it. Or it's skipped a generation. And they get it that way. So, and that's one thing I'm going to ask him is, you know, how he got his. I mean, he started out at five years old. Very cold over here. Internet has been playing up lately. Oh, I see. You're born with it. Yeah, yeah, I guess you are born with it, but but where are what oh here he comes. Welcome back. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Phone died. Oh, I got you. It started making a bit of a crashing noise and it just went off and it turns out it's not been charging. <laughs> so we one of the sorry. questions I was one of one of the things, uh, let's see here. Well, Thank you for coming back. That's Welcome. okay. One one of the things that we were talking about is how did you get your abilities? Did your parents or grandparents have them? Uh, my uh, mother had them a slight bit, uh, but it's supposed to skip skip a generation. Uh, so with me and my sister, she hasn't got it, and none of my kids. I've inherited it, but my granddaughter, she sort of inherited it a little bit. She sort of seen things. Uh, Scarlet. Uh, Scarlet, yeah. She sort of seen things, so she could well be the next one within the family with the gift. Wow. That's pretty interesting. And that's one thing I was discussing with uh, people that's watching is, you know, how do you get the abilities? And one of the people were asking if you can do something to me, if you can uh, pick up something on me. I can, I can do something for you. You stand on a second. You stand on a minute. As soon as you went black is when they asked. <laughs> what? Sounds about, sounds, sounds about right. Do sound about that. It's about normal. Uh, people do ask sort of things. Uh, right. So what I was saying about cards, I'll just do a quick. 
I'll pull my favourite cards out. And I'll just he loves his ends. I'll just, I'll just do, do like these cards. So these are, these are, these are six cards that I've just been picked out while we talk, while while we've just been talking. Uh, so these cards are based on, these cards are based on things around your life. So these cards pick up on your emotions, your feelings, your life in general. Um, but tell me things about them, and it's to like read a card is. It's sort of a different sort of ability, so you, you can sit and read a card. So, so, you can sit and read a card. So, so, my first card that I've just picked out for you tells me that you've got a lot of bad stuff going off in your life, a lot of things happen to you where you need a sort of a lot of sort of good, good healing. You, you had a lot of sort of pressure that's been going off around you, so you've had a lot of things that's caused you to sort of not be sure of the way that you're going. So you've had things that's going up around you where you've sort of gone, you know, I'm not right sure on what I do or things that I'm saying or things that I'm doing. I think that now you've sort of got yourself into a into a better place. You, you're enjoying things that's going up around you, but you have sort of gone through that hard time. You have sort of gone, is it worth it? Is it good? Am I going to get this? Am I going to get that? You've gone through that sort of transition period where things have just gone a bit away, a bit sort of upside down, topsy-turvy. You had to fight for things to get things done and fight to get to where you want to be in life so you, you've had to have all that all this stuff happen to you you've had all, all this bad this like bad energy that's been around you, you you've you've had all that stuff be where people sort of took you for granted or people sort of took you for money or people sort of took you because they want to sort of just sort of use you to get things better for them and not for you so they've sort of used things to get you to get things from you that you don't want to do but it's like the sort of dragging things away from you and dragging your life, dra dragging that life energy away and, and down from you and not getting things sort of right. Uh, so that's your first card. It's, it's, it's all about all this healing, this energy, this this good thing. You want to give you that positive healing coming out from spirit and give you that help to sort of get yourself going and get your strength feeling better inside because I don't know if you've, if you've had some sort of health problems in the past, but, this, but it's like that sort of feeling of this card is sort of giving you that healing into the saying you, but you need it, you need that protection, you need that help from spirit above. Uh, you are sort of in a place now within your life where where things are really sort of calm now. Uh, things have got a bit better. Uh, things are sort of, there's still things that are going off. As you've noticed, all the cards picking up on things happening to you that's been making you feel down, making you feel depressed. But but they are saying on, on your second card that things are getting a bit better for you. So things are getting more harmony. Things are getting working out better for you. You're sort of going through life now. You're sort of going, yeah, OK, I'm enjoying that. I know where I'm going now. This is working out fine. That's working out fine. Yeah, I'm enjoying doing this. I'm enjoying doing that. I've got all these friends, all these people that, all, all, all like around me, we're all giving you this love, giving you that harmony, and keeping making you feel that warm and that love from people that are around you. So it's now changing your life, sort of getting better for yourself. You do still sort of, you still sort of compromise yourself. So you do sort of look at yourself and go, "Is this really me? Am I really doing this? Is this what I'm actually doing? I can't believe I'm doing all this. What's what else? This happened." You're comparing yourself all the time. You you can't. Sometimes you've got to pinch yourself and say, "Is this actually is this actually going off? Am I doing this? Is this working okay? Is this working fine? Am I doing this properly?" I I can't get my head around where things are going. I can't get my head around where things are happening. And you just sort of keep now. Oh, this can't be right. This can't be right. I can't be doing this. It's because things are changing for you. There are times within your life where you have felt lonely, you have felt by yourself, you have felt trapped. So these times in your life where you felt sort of that loneliness, where you just we just felt you want to just go into a corner and just go to sleep and go out of the way and just let, let the world travel past you and not be bothered. So these that time 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 with, with uh, in your life. Uh, you have got a lot of things happening around you at the moment, my friend. You've got things happening. So you have got a lot of... I don't know if you've got a lot of projects that are on uh, on the move, but you've got things that are changing for your life. So you've got a life changing coming up. And it's showing me in this card that things are, are going to start growing for you. Things can start, start getting better for you. Things are going to just go, 
whoa, I can't believe the way this is going, but things are going to get there. And you're going to really enjoy the pathway that they've laid out for him, the way things are heading. Last one. You're not quite complete yet. You've still got things that you want to do. So you got that, that last piece of jigsaw in your head, just didn't quite fit in yet. You're sort of twisting it around thinking, right, shall I try that or shall I try this? And you're moving things about thinking, right, I'll put it this way, I'll put it that way. And if that don't work, I'll do this. And if that don't work, so you're still not complete. You've still got things within your life where things are heading, where things are going. So you've got to sort of figure out which way to turn that last bit of puzzle to set, make sure it fits into the right section. And when it fits, you'll go, that's it. I've got it cracked. And all where I'm going now, I've got things sorted. And that is how you read cards. Yes, Darren. You're right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Earth, Earth, Earth. <laughs> <laughs> to earth i'm speechless he, he actually caught me off guard folks around the world ladies and gentlemen he is spot on and and uh darren just named it too uh, uh, uh that's how you be, that's how you read that that's how you read that and i'll show you my card this is my brother, so, brother, brother. <laughs> everybody but sort of watching uh these uh, it's like i work with different cards so this is one of my favorite packs so when I say cards, you've got to learn to read them. As you can see, right. see with my cards, all they are is just pictures. And you've got to learn to read can I, what's on the card and put it into somebody's reading. They're all different. And they're one of the pack of cards I that I work with. Can I just put in a moment, right, just to knock it out in the book completely? Right, can we do is brother from another miss uh, mother, that, uh, da, is it Darren uh, Brownson? Is it? Yeah, Darren Bronson. Can we just quickly do him a tarot? That's so you don't. So Darren, you know, are you, you know up for name, that? Darren Bronson? Yeah, okay. All right. So these are my tarot cards. I've, I've had these for such a long time. So these are tarot cards. Uh, so these are my Darren Bronson, you're up. I've Hopefully you're still here. I've had these for such a long time. Right? So these are my tarot cards. These, I've had these for oh, a long time. So these are what I work with on a day to day basis. These are my. My bees come everywhere with me. These are my my own little baby. So I can't see uh, Darren's face. I can't see him. And he's only got the name. I've only got the name. And we will go. I mean, we will go in and we will pull a pull card out of here. And I'll link into my my guide and I will see what my guide says. Right, so this is for Darren. <clears throat> Darren, uh, I do feel looking at this card, my friend, but there's something happening around your life where, you, where you're going through a bit of a transition thing where, th where something's happened that would sort of put you into sort of a bit of a trapped, a trapped place, a bit of a trapped area where you would feel the walls coming around you, where you would feel something pressure where pressure's coming in it's all getting stuck around you and it's filled as well you're stuck in this bit of a loop this bit of a hole you just can't seem to sort of get yourself out of this this bad spot that you see, that you see it seems to be going round in a circus it's me constant it just seems to be all something's going off around you where there's something that's sort of trapping you in or making you feel trapped or making you feel dark within that area i also feel in this card there's somebody around you that's having problems with maybe headaches or that sort of feeling because I've got I'm getting redness to the head. I also feel there's something wrong wrong with somebody's sort of uh left side uh, left side of their body. So I don't know if somebody's got problems with that left arm or getting pains in that arm or or that sort of feeling. There's something going off with that left side of the body. I also feel look at this card. There's somebody you've got to be careful of around you. There's somebody that's hiding. There's somebody that's sort of Excuse my friends, but taking the wee wee, taking the piss. There's somebody that's sort of talking to you, but then talking about you. So they're hiding behind things. They're not telling you things that they want you to know. They're only telling you things that you want to know and not telling you the truth. So be aware of that person that's around you. I also feel there's something <laughs> quite cold around you as well, my friends. So there's something <coughs> cold going off. There's something of a cold, and if it's a cold relationship, or there's something 
cold that's happening around me. So I've got this cold feeling with this card as well. So it's like you give me that cold sort of feeling. So just be aware of where that card's saying to you. Apparently, you know about it. Yeah, I think I know most of it. <laughs> Darren, what do you think, Mr. Bronson? I'm waiting for it. I am waiting for it. I'm, I'm waiting, waiting for, for it. it too. I don't know if you saw <laughs> it. He was like, oh my God. Because I texted him and let him know I'm in the UK because he's in the UK too. Yeah. So. But, you know, while you know, I was gone, I was talking about how amazing A1 it is. Right. 100% A1 right. There you go. See? <laughs> that's that's just mind-blowing. It, it really is. And, and for not knowing who people are and not seeing them, that you I have the have... opportunity and the gift to do yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah, I don't have to see people, so I can also do readings down the telephone, so I can talk to somebody over the phone and give them a reading over the phone. It's I don't have to see that person face to face. This is the difference between a genuine psychic, somebody Insane. that somebody that does not lie, somebody that tells the truth, and somebody that cons you and takes money out of you and lies and doesn't do it as it should be. This is the difference. Right. Wow. Tell him about that person from America what joined your live that day. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We were doing a live. This will this will get your brain. This will, this is insane. This one. We're doing a live psychic, psychic yeah. event one night. So I've got me all my all my mediums that work on my page all come together for one night and we do we just sit here and we say what we're getting and seeing who we're linking to them and they come on 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 like this and we, and we, we, we like give them a psychic reading on what's happening so i'm sat here this day and i'm i'm going about things and i'm describing somebody that has been killed i'm describing somebody on on how they got killed and describing somebody and i've got this feeling but it's not in the uk i feel more like it's somewhere in america i feel it's over the pond so i'm describing this person i'm describing what happened and all of a sudden, this lady jumped on live and she went, can I come on the live? And I went, yeah. She came on the live like this and she says, I can't believe what I'm hearing. I was flicking through Facebook trying to find something to watch and I came across your page and you are talking about my dead friend who, was, who got shot a week previously. Imagine it. That is that is something. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm just insane. mind blowing, you know. It, it, Seriously, I've never had that happen. That was totally out of the blue. It was just, yeah, it was real. You what, mom? Mom's yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to in a bit, and then also, it's not only it's not only humans. So you also, I I can also communicate with pets as well so dogs cats whatever so everything that's got a soul i can communicate with i know it sounds funny having to deal having to talk to dogs but that i can i've had dogs several times like i was doing a reading for somebody and i'm with this this dog came through and i'm describing the dog and i'm describing where it used to walk and I'm describing where its ashes are, and I'm describing a photo of this dog at the side of the ashes, and where its ashes are in this house. And this lady came up for me. She says, "You just tell me about my my dog that passed the cancer. I knew how it died as well, but died of cancer. And you're describing where I used to walk my dog, and the ashes. Yes, they are on this place, and yes, there's a photo of my dog at the side of this ashes. And the dog's telling me all the story about what happened to it." Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to like the video, ring the bell, and subscribe. We have a special guest on our show. <coughs> uh, hopefully, you're all enjoying them. I know I am. And my <laughs> brother from a different mother, Darren Bronson. I think he's in quite of a shock right now. So, that's in interesting. So I guess your collection of haunted items will grow then as more as you do ghost things. 
I will probably say it's, it will. it's probably going to grow. I'm running out of space for my dolls. I need to get uh, a bigger a bigger shelf sorted out for them. Um, but no, I can I do I do sessions in here with the dolls on now and again, and I do things in here where where I sit here and I have I have my team come on and on, on live feed, and we do things with the dolls and other odd objects that I've got. I've got. I've got a gibbet box. Uh, anyone know what gibbet box is? It's a box that is in oh, well, I do know what a gibbet box is. Yes. Yeah, and then I've got, I can't remember the name of this one. I've got another box, but I can't remember the name of it. I keep forgetting the name of this thing. It's not a gibbet box, it's something else. Uh, but this one can be opened and used. And this one came from, from a witch, from a, a coven of witches. And the story goes that they trapped and encased a a shadow being within this box and we've had this box out and it sent all my equipment going haywire and whatever else so that is that is a box that can be open we did it box and my daughter's just fetched oh cover it up this is my divot box this thing is mine it's all sealed with wax and whatever else it's all sealed up and i won't open it wow Explain uh, to uh, the the audience what a divot box is. Yeah, a divot box on a on a site on a spiritual sense, a divot box is a box that is used to trap or encase a evil spirit or evil ghost or evil uh, entity. And the way that it's done is, and I'll be saying, but we get them into the box and we trap it in the box and they put seals round it so the car seals into the box to keep that box shut and then they, they seal it round with wax to keep it in case now if they get opened they're supposed to wreak uh, havoc in the house that they get opened in there's also a lot of fakes about them uh, being around we think that that one is a trap witch because uh, the spirit box that we used one night came out with witch and box and trapped so we think that there's a witch trapped in that box but that's only our guess with what it came out on the spirit box wow uh, so things like that and then also i've started going to stuff like this so this will blow your mind so that i don't know if you can see it or not but uh -huh. that is a world war one death penny so in the uk when a British soldier got killed in the First World War. The uh, ministry would send out not a medal but a death penny with the bloke's name on it and where he served and things about that. So this is a, a death penny to a soldier that was killed in the First World War. And this is also quite active about things when i know a lot about this i've got all information about this about where this bloke got killed where he served and not only that but he's he's a local he's a yorkshire man as well so it's come to me and it costs quite a bit and i won't part of it that's my pride and joy so you can see the sort of things that i sort of get involved with wow um, yeah, I'd read the last comment that Darren Bronson just wrote. Hang on. Hang on. Last comment. Last comment, uh, last comment that one. Yeah, I've just told. I've, I've just told my. Uh, thinking most, most of you. Thank you. Excuse me. Yeah. That's, I get that. That is what I try. I don't try to change people's minds. So people that are skeptic, a lot of psychics or a lot of paranormal investigators don't like skeptics. They won't entertain them. I love skeptics. I think skeptics ask some really, really important questions. And if I can do a skeptic reading and right, his wife's a skeptic. I know I heard. And if I can do a skeptic reading and leave them sort of thinking that hang on a minute how's that how's this then that's my job you cannot change it don't matter what you do what you try to do you cannot 
change a skeptic's mind from from being a non-believer to be a believer. It don't happen. It 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 won't happen. They can ask questions and ask things about what's happening, but they just won't change from being a, a skeptic. That's what they are. Uh, but I'm not out to change people's minds. I'm out to give them a second thought of something that might be out there that they can't explain. Yeah, and and, and they may not like what they want to hear, though, too. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but I do like I, I do like skeptics because we do ask some good questions. People that are genuine skeptics but don't come on your page and start arguing, tossing this, and just want to cause trouble. That's different. But a proper skeptic will ask serious questions and that's what i like now Derek green oh, it's me. Uh, it's he me. just asked it's me it's Kelly. Oh, he? yeah right listen um if if darren's wife's there can you do it he's gonna be showing a bit now i'm right. gonna get this done okay uh so so yeah you can't change skeptics mind but i don't know you just can't do it it's but we do ask some good questions. I do like skeptics, but you just can't change their mind. It doesn't matter what you say or what you do. They'll always question. They'll always question what's being said, rather than say, "Yes, you were right," or "Yes, you were wrong." A, a genuine skeptic will always sort of question what you've said, but they'll never say that's correct or that's wrong. They'll just question it, and that is it. They'll never tell you if you're right or wrong. They'll just come out with some questions and that's about it so you go ghost hunting and uh, from my understanding you go quite a bit and uh what do you think about the cryptids over there about the what sorry cryptids, cryptids werewolves uh, dog man sasquatch <laughs> wolves man kind of chase uh uh, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, don't get me started. Uh, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can it chase is what best one? Yeah, we've got a place in the UK called uh, Can it Chase, which is in Birmingham, and it's rumored to be a paranormal hotspot. And the hauntings or the paranormal things that happen in this place is they have ufos that have been seen he knows uh, it Darren, he knows it about they've it. had they've had ufos that have been seen they've got things called uh the black eyed children which are children with the eyes blacked out they've got Ooh. things that are called the uh pig monster which is half pig half human and they've also got whether it's true or not but they've also got werewolves or supposed to have werewolves people have heard something screaming or howling in the woods that they can't explain and they automatically think of werewolves whether or not it is i don't know uh there's a lot of things out there that you can't explain there's a lot of things happening in the world that you can't explain as yourself in in america and canada you've got uh, bigfoot and sasquatch and whatever else that have been seen but you can't explain what it is it's same in the UK, we've got things, there's a place I've been to where it was a UFO hotspot uh, in Yorkshire and we went to this, this wood and we were setting up and we saw a bright light coming down the footpath towards us that looked like somebody with a torch or a bike, a bicycle with its light on. So we all said, step back, let this, this come past and it never showed up. It never got to us. It just disappeared. And these are the sightings that are seen in this wood where we was, these bright lights people can't explain. And it's same in Canic Chase. There's things that you can't explain that happens. And it's there's a lot of woods that around where I live that are haunted with uh, there's one where we go to that is called Witches Wood. It's haunted by a covenant of witches. It's a history. Which is why that he was in that area in that wood, so we do know that witches were there. Whether or not they were flying around on broomsticks, black cats, that's probably a myth because most witches are herbalists, so it's that's the way it goes. But it's but witches were in this wood at the time, and not far from where I am now. If I look out of my window, there's a wood where we go to not far from here, 
and that's haunted by a green lady. That's the only way we can describe her. It's a lady in green at Hornfish Wood. So there's things around that you can't explain. Uh, werewolves. I'm not so sure of UK having Mothman or Owlman or stuff like that. I have heard stories of things that people can't explain, but can't, but, but don't know what they're seeing, whether they are mythical creatures or not. I don't know. That's that's very interesting, you know. So, do you all get called to people's houses? Yes. Or do you uh, all just go places? No, no, no. I, we do. I've done houses in the past. Uh, I love in people's houses uh, because that's a different sort of haunting, different sort of paranormal events. Uh, houses are somebody's private place where things are happening and we can't explain it. Done several houses of it uh, of it past. Um, favorite locate my my old time favorite location. Anybody that knows me will know that my favorite one hundred percent location I like to go to is an old uh, RAF station. I love going into old RAF places that's got history from the Second World War or First World War and. And communicating with airmen that have passed over, that have not made it home, or uh, crashed on landing, or been killed at war, whatever. And these places, I love uh, going into RF bases. I also like going into. Somebody will say it. I also like going underground, so I like going into bunkers and places like that. Uh, I love bunkers and that sort of thing. It's something that I've always liked. If I can go underground, I will go underground and explore somewhere where it's dark and dingy and whatever that's something i like doing the RAF bases are one of my favorite locations of all times yeah darren just said too uh if your daughter's reading the the notes uh darren actually saw the green man too and that's how we met yeah 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 and see, you know that the green man goes back uh, a a long time in your all yeah, history. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's uh, quite true. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of strange things within this world that we can't explain. Uh, there's a lot of things in the paranormal. Paranormal at the moment has changed. It's not like it used to be when I started. It's not. It's not the same anymore. There's a lot of teams now that are in the UK that are only out for one thing and one thing only. It's no longer about ghost hunting and that sort of thing, which is what it should be. And we don't like uh, other teams coming into a location when they're there because they're there and we don't like it. It happens all throughout the paranormal. And end of the day, we're all out for the same thing. So, but people just don't like working with other people and it's, it's wrong. We'll work with anybody else when we go out. If we go out and there's somebody else come to a location and we're there and they say, can we join you? Yeah, come and join us. We invite people that watch me. If we know, if we're, if we're at a location where they live or we know a location and people want to come and join us in a ghost hunt, you're more than welcome. We don't tell people that, no, you can't come and join us. We like people to come along. We like people to get involved and in, enjoy what we do uh, as a team and investigate these locations and try and scare the hell out of people about things that's happened. But, yeah, we love people, people to come and join us on locations and come and get involved with us. Yeah, Darren says, uh, seeing the green man had a conclusion and the girl with me now it's a blessing as my mind is a hundred percent open and, yeah. and that's the thing you know a lot of people don't believe in things no unfortunately until it happens to them yeah. now, over here in america when they see bigfoot or sasquatch uh, a lot of people uh, get ptsd wet themselves yeah because you know they never did believe in it and they're out there in the woods hunting or mushroom collecting and and they come across one and it scares them so bad you know they they never return back to the woods at all yeah it's exactly the same with going out out ghost hunting or seeing something that would happen to you or uh 
I had a lady contact me uh, not long back. She sent me a video of something that she caught in a grand's bedroom. Her gran was on the end of life care. So her gran was dying. And this video she sent me was taken two weeks before her gran's passing. And it shows something fly out of the wall and go across her bed and then turn and fly back round and then turn and come back the other way. But it's like a set of angel wings and her brain couldn't take it in what she was seeing. Uh, which is how most people see things. They, sort of, they see it, but they don't want to believe what they see. The brain can't figure it out what they're looking at. Um, as an investigator, I told her what it was. And she will, and she went, that would make perfect sense, but you just tell me now. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah, that would make sense. And once I told her what, what it was, she went, yeah, oh, yeah, I can understand. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. But her brain couldn't take it in what she was looking at until she spoke to me about right. it. Uh, which right. is how most people see the paranormal. You know, Brian says it's the fear of something that we don't understand. And Brian's actually right. Yeah, and that's one of the yeah. things that uh, you know a lot of people you know affects is because we are taught a certain way, we are learned a certain way, we are taught that things that don't exist do exist. Yeah. Right. Yep. You know, for look, the past two weeks we're having creatures watch up on beaches. And they don't know what they are, but they're burying them on beaches. Wait a minute. Why don't you get a pickup truck and a flatbed and a and a crane or a backhoe and, and take it back to the office and look? Yeah. Yeah. Try and look. yeah. 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 I understand that. Yeah. They don't do it. No, exactly. We don't. And it's it's that fear of not knowing, but people can't get the edge around. That's what it is. It's something like that happens and they sort of just go. Right, we don't know what it is. We're not going to find out what it is, so we'll destroy it and get rid of it so no one else can find out what it is. And it's the wrong attitude to take. There's, more, to there's more things out there that people thought wasn't, was dead and has been found uh, living that they sort of go, hang on a minute, there must be something out there because things have been come up before. So two, there's two things come to mind. One's a fish and one's a dog, i.e. the Tasmanian tiger, Tasmanian, or whatever you call it, was for uh -huh. extinct, but it was found alive centuries down the line, and it sort of, people go, hang on, that was supposed to be dead. The other one's a, a serious fish that was supposed to die in, in a dinosaur, but they're still catching them now every now and again one surfaces and we get caught and you kind of think hang a minute this thing's supposed to be dead there's things out there that we can't explain and that's what scares people yeah i mean you're right it really does now have you ever frequently spent time in cemeteries yes yeah <laughs> one of my <laughs> One of my favorite things to do when I was younger, and I will say this, and people don't, don't understand, understand what I'm saying, but I used to enjoy walking through a cemetery on my own, in the dark, late on at night, because I found it to be not scary and really, really peaceful, and I felt at home being in a cemetery. I know it's strange to, to, to say that, but it's... We've been seeing things and hearing things and whatever else. I found the cemeteries when I was younger to be a place of refuge for myself. It was somewhere where I could go, where I felt as though well nothing would hurt me. It's a place where I could go and sit and walk through and not be scared of something happening to me that would happen outside of them cemetery walls. I know it sounds weird, but I've always had... Uh, a strong feeling, strong urge for cemeteries. It's, it, I don't do that many now I've got older. I might do one every now and again, but I still like cemeteries. I still love cemeteries. So what happens when you walk into a cemetery? It, it, it depends if them places are haunted. Let's get one thing straight before we start. 
not every cemetery is haunted. You are walking in somebody's last resting place. If a person is going to be walking around haunting anywhere, they're going to be haunting a place where they lived or where they worked or where they died. Not a cemetery. You do get some that walk on a cemetery, but, but not every cemetery is, is a haunted one. Yeah? People think that all cemeteries are haunted. Not every cemetery is haunted. Uh, there is some, but there's not a lot. But the ones that are, the ones that we've been to, that we know are haunted, we get some really good activity within them places. So we see uh, shadow figures walking around the church, going from grave to grave. You, 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 you like see things that you can't sort of quite know what they are. You see a shadow. There's a cemetery, my local cemetery where uh, I live. We are, we are the only team that is allowed to go in this cemetery. I did my filming in there. I've had it, had it all passed by our local authorities and whatever else. And we are the only team that are allowed to go in this cemetery. And that has had nuns praying by certain graves, which is a, a nun a nuns that, that died. And nuns are seen praying by these graves at night time. Uh, there's other things happening in this uh, cemetery. So we've got, the children from a pit disaster that happened locally that are buried within that that area. So they're sort of running around and playing around. And it's a good location to go to. We don't do it all the time, just every now and again, but it's the only one that we we as a team are actually allowed to go and do. That's interesting. Now uh Tasha Bear. Yeah, oh, graveyard. Yeah, and she's making a face. Yep. And Brian says, I love cemeteries as a kid. Darren Bronson, my mom, always used to say, the passed away won't hurt you. Darren says, nope. also, dog people are seen a lot around graveyards for some reason. There's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of things around cemeteries. It's, uh, yeah, like Brian said, nobody else says, but it's not... It's not the dead that you're going to be scared of. It's the living that you're going to be scared of. Uh, I've always said that. The dead can't hurt you. The living can. Uh, the majority of my... Uh, the majority of my of my friends, of my family, that I call my family, are all people that have passed over. Uh, so the people that I sort of relate to more are the, are the people that have passed over, the people that are no longer living. These are... These are the people that I talk to all the time. So these are, I know it sounds sounds weird saying that, but that's the way it is. I much rather talk to the to the dead than talk to the living. It's the way that I am. That's what I do. Uh, Sue Duckwhite. I live right next to a graveyard, 50 yards from a bedroom window. Hey, oh, uh, <laughs> Duck Wack, I couldn't handle that. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, we used to live, we used to live, uh, when I first met my wife before we got married, uh, we used to live outside of a, we actually lived in the grave digger's house. So the person that dug the graves in the cemetery, which was outside of the window, we actually lived in the grave digger's house and a spirit had been seen in that house of a gentleman rocking in a rocking chair by the window. Derek, are you crazy or something? Why would you live there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably am, actually. Yeah, I probably am. It's, uh, it, comes, it comes with my job, unfortunately. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, there's just places that I just like to be in. And it's like, yeah, the dark, the dark never scares me. The dark's sort of a place where I sort of well, live my I life. It's the sort of place where I spend most of my time is, is the dark. So uh, dark on my own, I'm quite happy to be on my own in dark. It doesn't, I'm yeah. not, I'm not scared of the dark one, but well, the dark sort of my friend. It's where things happen and things go bang in the night. That's where I like to be. Yeah, but look at that! Look at that day when I did that first encounter. Oh, I know. No I know. way. <laughs> I know. Let me tell you something. I'm so scared of the dark. 
I would have flashlights all over my body. I would look, 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 look like a human same walking light bulb. <laughs> yep, same as me. That's same as her. Exactly same. You uh, know. You no, know, the dark's never. I've never been scared of the dark. I love. I love the dark. It doesn't bother me one bit. I can go for walks, and yeah, I love the dark. You're well, you have a lot of experience, though. See. Yeah. You know, over the years, so exactly. that 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 makes a lot of difference. Don't now, for me, that. walking into a house and seeing a ghost come out of the wall, I'll probably have a heart attack, mess my pants, and die. I did and you that just once. probably say, hello. Yeah. I did that yeah. once. I'd probably, I'd, probably go, I'd probably go and chase it and, 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 and then have a talk to you. But there's also a misrepresentation about ghosts and spirit as well. Uh, people, some strange reason, people think that a ghost is a spirit, or a spirit is a ghost, and it's not. No, two it's different not. things. It's two different things. A spirit is one that's got a mind and will of its own, so a spirit is one that makes noise, a spirit goes bang, a spirit that can move things, and blah, 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 whatever. A, a ghost, hang on a second, I'm just change it, charge you up for it, hang on, hang on a sec. Just check just making it. sure, just checking it. Yeah, yeah sorry. Right. Uh, and a ghost is, a, is like a video rerun of something that has happened. So it's like the best way of describing a ghost is if you see a haunted stagecoach, you would have to see the stagecoach, the horses, and the, the horses, and the man on the top driving it. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. But a spirit is okay. a different sort of thing. A spirit will communicate and talk with you and whatever else, but a ghost won't or a ghost can't. Okay. And people get sense. people get the two confused. They think a ghost is a spirit and a spirit is a ghost, and it's not. It's a different thing. But people will say, yeah, but a, a ghost looks at me. No, a ghost is looking at something that would have been where you are now, but it's walking past it. Yeah, but a ghost walks through a wall. Yeah, but that, that, that ghost is walking through a door. It would have been a door in its time, but now the building's changed. That door is now gone. But don't walk through walls, you walk through open doors. Uh, okay. But people get the two confused like you wouldn't believe. So spirit communication a ghost is like a video rerun. Okay. That's, That's the best way to describe it. So when, when you see something in your house that makes a noise and makes a bang and tries and you hear voices, that is a spirit, not a ghost. That's the difference. Well, Derek. It's been a pleasure to have you on my show. I gotta have you back. That's definitely oh, yeah. anytime. Well, how do anytime. people get a hold of you? So people can get hold of me. So they can uh, go on to Facebook and type in uh, Derek Green Psychic Medium. You got comments coming in. Oh my God, Kelly! Watchers, Wood, we ran. Uh, fastest to get out of the darkness. Yeah, Brian, spirits communicate. Ghost, just memory, energy. Yeah, yeah. So one, yeah. Once again, no, Mister Derek Green, how can I get a hold of you again? Yeah. So sorry, as I was saying. So if people want to want to contact me from my psychic page, which is where I do all my readings and spiritual things, that is on Derek Green Psychic Medium. Uh, tap into Facebook and you will find me on Facebook. People want to get involved with the paranormal and get involved with that side of us. Type in South West Yorkshire Paranormal Team and it will come up and you'll see uh, a ghost like this with an emblem on it and it'll, you'll get a link to that and then just join the page as you would normally. And that's for his paranormal ghost hunting side of things throughout most nights, most weekends. And, but, yeah, but yeah, I'm reading his pages, get it inside your medium. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. Uh, I started a group up not too long ago, and it's made for people just like you. It's called right. uh, EVPs, Ghost, or EVPs, Browse, Howls. And something else where you can share your evidence with the world. Yep. So I'll send that link to you here. I think yes, you really will enjoy it. 
I really do. Is there anything else that you like to say to people or anything before we go? Uh, no, just just enjoy the people that have passed over. Enjoy your, your loved ones. It's coming to Christmas, guys, so you'll be getting more of your loved ones that are coming through to you. This time of year now, the loved ones start wanting to make contact with you. So when you see something in your house or you see something move or, or, or you smell something that, that you would know about, ask simple questions. Don't be scared of people that are there to give you the love and the warmth at this time of year that they want to send you to make sure that you all know that your loved ones are still around you. And Darren Bronson, Mr. Bronson from UK, says, thank you very much, and the daughter, too. You're welcome. And if you want to be on Grizzly Show, all you have to do is email me at grizzly, the paranormal at gmail.com. Once again, that's grizzly, the paranormal at gmail.com. Gmail Sorry, I'm still fascinated with Derek's show. Uh, it's been fantastic from coast to coast and around the world, especially from UK. It's that time of the night. You'll see me here shortly on the night next broadcast. But until then, we must say goodbye. Derek, it's been awesome. Thank, Thank you, you very, for, very much. Thank you for your invite. I, I've loved every minute.